We're just out harrowing the 10 acre field we just seeded uh, two days ago. And uh, the reason we're doing that is that uh, because we we're planting so many different species at once, it's really hard to uh, find a depth that works for everybody. Uh, you know, as you guys are probably familiar, if, if you're planting stuff in your gardens, typically you're, you're planting your seeds at, you know, two to three times the depth of whatever the, um, the width of the, the seed is. And so because we're planting things ranging from, you know, the size of a pea down to basically the size of a grain of sand, like some of our legumes, it's really challenging to get a, a seed depth that works. So what we're doing, and just to show you guys some of the seed depth that we're, we're dealing with here is, is you know it's just barely below the the surface I and mean, we've got some of our oats some of our peas there's also um some rye in there and some of the uh cover crops things like uh there's uh there's a legume <clears throat> all of our radishes and things so they're 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 quite small but these harrows allow us to come along and you can see the the path that the seed drill went on was this way. And now we're coming along at a, at a 45 degree angle so that these tines are basically coming along the surface and just covering everything over. And that allows us to get to our kind of target seed depth of about, about half an inch. Now, you know, the, the this is a very, um, in exact science because you know some of the seeds are going to be deeper some of them are going to be sh shallower that's another reason why we put so many different kinds of seeds into our mixes is we've just found it's better to just have a shotgun approach just to put a lot of different options out there and then you know depending on where the seed falls what the soil conditions are like uh, what the needs of the soil are uh, because we've got you know 10 15 different species in there there's a good chance that at least something's going to take and get that ground covered and produce something so you can see here the Kind of the line this is the the seed drill where the path went and then this is what it looks like after after we've harrowed so it just gets a really nice um seed coverage it also helps to you know break up any lumps and uh um you know come in and and, and uh you know even things out so that when we come by to, to combine we're we're not going to have issues with uh you know having to go up and down and and you know being hard on machinery but you can just see here just how much moisture is in the soil and, and all the soil life and if you guys picked up some of those ants that just came across there i'll stop messing around there so i mean we like we came through here with that with that field order tiller and in one pass uh, we were able to have you know maximum disturbance get the seed bed that we wanted to create a non-competitive zone for our, our desirable annuals to grow and then leave it alone so you know we there's this there's this myth that uh in, in agriculture and, and really in our, our entire culture right now that i i find um you know really uh, it, it's, it's something we need to talk more about is that this this idea that that death is bad and that disturbance is bad. Uh, this is a very childish approach to to life. Uh, you know, death. There's there's nothing in this world that can live without something else dying, and and you know. But the, the onus is on is on us is to try to create situations where you know we're 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 not creating needless death and and needless destruction. So you know, this is in a way this 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 optimized disturbance pattern that we're we're trying to find on our farm i think is is going to be you know a really it, this is going to be the future of uh, of agriculture here is is having these really short duration high intensity disturbance events uh with a long rest period afterwards so that we can take advantage of these natural life and death cycles uh while increasing the biodiversity i mean We've been playing around with this for a couple of years now in our annual gardens and, and now in the broad acre. And every year we've seen an increase in the diversity of, of soil microfauna and macrofauna, you know, the, the number of bird species, the, the quality of our soil. Uh, you, you know, you just, just look down at, at, at some of the this soil structure here. We've got, uh, look, there's an earthworm right there. You know, we've got just this amazing chocolate cake like structure tons of moisture you know, if that isn't soil health i don't know what is and 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 we're, we're doing this all without any synthetic fertilizers 
any herbicides, any biocides whatsoever, and also with a, with a fraction of the fossil fuels. I mean, you know, the, on this 10 acre field, we, we might have been lucky to, you know, we might have burned 100 gallons of diesel planting this crop. And, and that 100 gallons of diesel is enough to, uh, you know, produce enough grain for our pigs and chickens for an entire year. If we take a look at, you know, any of the, the neighbors around us right now that are out seeding, if they're putting on 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre on one acre, that 100 pounds of, of nitrogen is, is the calorific equivalent to, to 100 gallons of diesel. It's basically one to one. A pound of fertilizer is the calorific value of a pound of, of, of di or a gallon of diesel. So in, in, we're basically already at a 10 to one in the amount of, of uh, energy that, we've, that, that uh, we're able to, to use to get to the same end. And, and that's just with the nitrogen. Then you have to, you know, spray it nine to, or six to 10 times. Uh, you've got to put on, you know, phosphorus and, uh, you know, some potassium on there as well. And then all the, the harvesting and everything else. So, I mean, this is, if we're trying to go to a low energy future, we have to start thinking about how we can uh, partner with natural systems and, and understand what the dynamics are and make these, these small little changes to create a huge return on the, on the back end. And, and that's really what we're trying to, to achieve here on our farm is, um, is, is farming like an ecosystem. And this is just one of the ways that we're, we're trying to, to work towards that because it, and it all comes back to the simple fact that the, the, the nutrient density of the food that we're eating is a function of the health of the ecosystem that produced it. It's, pl it's plain and simple. And so we can't have healthy nutrient dense food without it coming from, you know, thriving biodiverse ecosystems and, you know, having you know, small fields on the, on the scale that we've got here with lots of shelter belts all around. Uh, and the fact that we're planting, you know, 10, 15 different species all at once that are going to, uh, so the, you know, those clovers and things, that's not for this year, that's for next year. We're actually planting two crops at once here. Um, there are two seasons at once. We're integrating our livestock into this system, uh, and and we're going to create a ton of, of of yields out of this. And 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 every year, we're going to create you know better soil. That's going to create the conditions for more nutrient dense food, more biodiversity, all these things that we're looking for. And 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 all of this comes from. Uh, you know, just little experiments that we've been working on on the on the small scale in our in our gardens, uh, and now we're at the point where we're we're ready to scale these things up, and uh, and give it a shot on the on the broad acre. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll talk to you later. Bye.